beneath the 600 meters of ice below me is the most important point of all. While it's true that still waters run deep, the weirdest things can be found in ocean waves. The waters of the Earth are undoubtedly huge and enigmatic. As a result, it is not surprising that when people have explored them, they have discovered some pretty bizarre things. Previous research has suggested that the watery depths below the Antarctic ice shelves are too cold and nutrient poor to sustain much life. However, a new study, revealed by Elon Musk, challenges researchers' understanding of the existence of life in extreme environments by exposing the discovery of a colony of animals on the seafloor. These animals aren't supposed to be alive there, and we have finally caught them on record. What exactly did researchers find in the far depths of the ocean? And why does this discovery have them scrambling for answers? Join us as we explore the impossible discovery made in the Arctic. A U.S. submarine made history in 1958 when it traveled beneath the ice to become the first craft to reach the North Pole. Scientists now have a whole new planet to investigate thanks to its mission. Nowadays, nuclear-powered submarines are stealthy weapons of destruction and deterrent that can travel with torpedoes and nuclear missiles for months at a time. For instance, the UK has consistently maintained at least one submarine with nuclear weapons at sea since 1969. The mission was also a scientific milestone that helped pave the way for a new era of exploration and discovery about the unusual environment beneath the Arctic ice. It served as a testbed for the military potential of nuclear submarines. Both the Navy and scientists get new knowledge about the Arctic Ocean and the environment in which they operate. With the use of submarines, we have access to a hostile environment that helps us comprehend both the present situation as well as the future state of the environment. Not only is Antarctica the coldest continent, but it also has the most mysteries to be revealed. There is still a treasure mine of strange and amazing anomalies beneath the ice and seas, just waiting to be uncovered, despite its isolation and ominous climate. Nothing is simple when you're in the midst of the Filchner Rhone ice shelf, five hours flight from the closest outpost in Antarctica. Geologist James Smith of the British Antarctic Survey survived over three months of sub-zero temperatures, sleeping in a tent, and eating dehydrated food despite the fact that it was the southern summer. He needed seafloor sediment, which was trapped under a half mile of ice, to research the history of the floating shelf, but the science itself was a pain. Smith and his colleagues had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to produce 20,000 liters of hot water, which they then poured through a pipe lowered down a borehole in order to reach it. They had to chip away at the ice for 20 hours before they could ultimately break through the shelf. They then lowered a GoPro camera and a device to capture the sediment. But the collector returned empty-handed. They gave it another shot, still bare. Again, nothing is simple in this situation. The instrument's round trips took an hour. Later that evening, Smith examined the video in his tent and noticed a very obvious issue. The video depicts a plunge through 3,000 feet of bluish-green ice that abruptly ends and gives way to the deep ocean. Before the seafloor, mostly light-colored silt, which Smith was after, something dark, can be seen in the coasts another 1,600 feet. That mysterious object turned out to be a boulder, which the camera captures as it falls face-first into the sediment. The camera rapidly corrects itself and scans the rock, exposing something completely unrelated to what the geologists were looking for. In actuality, it was something incredibly unlikely. They found life. There is only one large boulder in the center of the mostly level seafloor. It's not like the ocean floor is covered in debris of this nature. Just his luck, Smith chose the wrong spot to drill. Smith is not a biologist, but his British Antarctic survey colleague Hugh Griffiths is. Griffiths saw a kind of film on the rock when he watched the video from the UK, which was probably a layer of microorganisms called a microbial mat. While sturdier, cylindrical sponges gripped the surface, a sponge that looked like an alien and other stalking animals hung from the rock. Wispy filaments that may have been part of the bacterial mats or even the strange hydroid animal dotted the rock. The nearest edge of the shelf, where the ice finishes and the open ocean begins, is 160 miles from the rock Smith unintentionally found. The closest place that might serve as a source of food is hundreds of miles away. 
This area would have sufficient sunshine to support an ecosystem and be in the appropriate position with respect to the rock for known currents to feed these organisms. As you get farther away from open sea and sunlight, all life becomes less abundant, according to current theories on what species could live beneath ice shelves. Small mobile scavengers and predators such as fish, worms, jellyfish, or krill have been discovered in these settings in earlier investigations. However, it was anticipated that filter feeding species, which depend on an outside source of food, would be among the first to submerge further. It's not our place to tell life what to do, yet it has no business being here. It's not the most exciting looking rock, if you don't know where it is, says Griffiths. Given that you are aware of it now, your jaw may be close to the floor at this moment. How did they get there is only one of the many questions that this find begs. What do they consume? They have been there for how long? How frequently do these covered boulders occur in nature? Are these the same species that we observe outside of the ice shelf, or are they a different species? And in the event that the ice shelf fell, what would happen to these communities? These species are definitely living in complete darkness, which is great because many deep-sea creatures also do the same thing. However, creatures that lead sessile, immobile lives on the deep-sea floor must rely on a reasonably constant source of food in the form of marine snow. Every living thing that is currently swimming in the water column above will eventually pass away and sink to the bottom of the ocean. Other animals pick at the bodies as they fall and begin to decay and spit off fragments, tiny bits that amass even on the deepest sea floors. This is effective in the majority of locations around Antarctica, where the seas are extremely productive. All species of fish, which in turn feed huge marine mammals like seals, are fed by tiny organisms known as plankton. All of this activity results in debris and dead creatures, which eventually turn into marine snow. However, the Antarctic animals that inhabit this particular rock don't reside beneath a busy water column. They are buried beneath a mile of thick ice. Moreover, they are unable to leave their rock in search of food. According to Griffiths, being something that's glued to the spot in a place where there isn't much food and it is very sporadic is the worst thing. Therefore, how on earth could they be feeding themselves? The food source is traveling horizontally rather than vertically, according to the researchers, who believe it is possible that the drift of this marine snow has been turned on its side. The researchers discovered that there are fruitful locations between 390 and 930 kilometers away after studying current charts near the drill site. Even while it might not be much, it's possible that hundreds of miles worth of organic material are traveling through these currents to support these animals. Given that marine snow formed at the surface must fall seven miles to reach the seafloor in the deepest region of the ocean, the Challenger Deep near Guam, that distance is astounding. Food would have to travel up to 133 times that far, and it would have to do so by floating sideways to get to the animals on this Antarctic rock. According to Rich Mui, curator of invertebrate zoology and geology at the California Academy of Sciences, who has studied Antarctic sea life but wasn't involved in this new experiment, this isn't particularly far-fetched given what scientists know about currents surrounding Antarctica. Seawater in the area becomes denser as it cools. According to Mui, it descends to the ocean floor and radiates outward from the Antarctic. And many, if not virtually all, of the current systems in the world are actually derived from these currents. Something needs to fill the space left behind when that water flows outward. There's going to be some inflow to replace that, says Mui, and that inflow will carry organic matter even over hundreds of kilometers. This would provide sustenance for our life forms that were trapped on that boulder. Additionally, the currents could introduce new species to the animal community on the rock. However, because they were unable to get samples, the researchers are still unsure of the precise diet of these sponges and other creatures. While some sponges are carnivorous and feed on small creatures, others filter organic debris from the water. That would be sort of your headline of the year, says Christopher Ma, a marine biologist at the Smithsonian who wasn't involved in the research. Killer sponges, living in the dark, cold recesses of Antarctica, where no life can survive. 
Since the camera didn't catch any fish or crustaceans, Griffiths and his team are also unsure if other mobile species like fish and crustaceans also inhabit the area around the rock, making it unclear whether the sessile animals are subject to predation. Do they all consume the same kind of food? Or do some of them maybe share nutrients with one another? Or are there additional roving creatures feeding this colony in any way? Only a different trip can provide the answers to these issues. The animals don't appear to be in danger of being buried because it does seem that the sedimentation surrounding the rock isn't that heavy. It's kind of a Goldilocks type thing going on, says Griffiths of the rock's apparently fortuitous location, where it's got just enough food coming in and it's got nothing that wants to eat them, as far as we can tell, and it's not getting buried by too much sediment. The discovery of ripples, which are generally created by currents, in the sediment surrounding the rock supported the idea that food was brought here from a distance. Furthermore, it's unclear how these immobile animals first arrived. Was it something that happened very locally, where they essentially hopped from one local boulder to another? Alternatively, it's possible that their parents were on a rock thousands of kilometers away, where a more typical marine ecology begins and the ice shelf ends, and they discharged their sperm and eggs to float in the currents. Griffiths and his colleagues are unable to estimate the age of these animals since they lack specimens. Given the long lifespans of Antarctic sponges, it's plausible that this ecosystem is incredibly old. The rock may have been infused with life long ago, but currents have also added new life to it through the centuries. Elon Musk, the researchers and others are unable to determine whether this rock is an anomaly or if such ecosystems are typical beneath the ice. These animal populations might not only have happened by chance when the scientists put their cameras onto the rock, Perhaps they are a common sight on the seafloor beneath Antarctica's ice shelves. There would undoubtedly be ample space for such ecosystems. The 560,000 square kilometers of these floating ice shelves. However, only a space the size of a tennis court has been examined under them by scientists using earlier boreholes. It is therefore possible that they are many and we haven't yet located them. This is the first recorded account of a hard substrate community, that is, a boulder community, deep beneath an ice shelf, and it seems to defy all prior hypotheses regarding the kinds of life that would be able to endure there. The researchers estimate that this colony could be up to 1,500 kilometers upstream from the nearest source of photosynthesis based on the local water currents. However, until the researchers have the equipment to gather samples of these species, a huge problem in itself, they won't know more about these animals. Other organisms are also known to acquire nutrients from glacial melts or compounds from methane seeps. Furthermore, using a sizable hot water drill, researchers discovered a never-before-seen ecosystem that lives in an underground river beneath the cold surface of the Larsen Ice Shelf. The covert habitat is located in a sizable chamber that is about 1,640 feet 500 meters below the ice's surface. After spotting an odd groove in a satellite photograph of the ice sheet, Scientists discovered the underground structure, but they never expected to find anything within when they eventually dug down to explore it. Instead, the crew discovered tens of thousands of small amphipod crustaceans, which had them jumping up and down for joy. Scientists now have the most in-depth understanding of the seafloor surrounding Antarctica, including its deepest point, the Factorian Deep, thanks to a new map of the Southern Ocean. The Factorian Deep was just found in 2019. It lies at a depth of about 24,400 feet, 7,437 m, below the ocean surface, or 17 Empire State Buildings stacked top to bottom. But up until this point, scientists were unaware of how it interacted with the nearby seafloor. The new map, which covers more than 18.5 million square miles, 48 million square kilometers of the seafloor is based on more than 1,200 sonar data sets, the majority of which were obtained by science vessels. The sea bottom map will be used by researchers to locate any sea mounts or underwater mountains that might be marine life hotspots. We need to figure out a means to interact closely with these animals and their surroundings in order to receive the answers to our queries. We might be out of time to accomplish this. Despite being hidden beneath a half mile of ice, this rock is increasingly in danger due to global warming. Future collapse of some of these large ice shelves could result in the loss of a distinctive ecology. 
Thwaites Glacier in Antarctica, also known as the Doomsday Glacier, was observed by underwater robots to be clinging to the seafloor by its fingernails. Once it separates, it may meet its end sooner than predicted because of its quick speed and a sharp increase in ice loss. During previously unrecognized phases of fast retreat within the last several centuries, the glacier scraped down the ocean floor, leaving behind a sequence of parallel grooves, according to a new map of the seafloor encircling the glacial behemoth. Researchers caution that excessive heat brought on by climate change could bring about this kind of rapid melting once more. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the thumbnail on your screen for more incredible videos.